You're listening to the Moose and the Loose, your 10 minutes action packed financial podcast with your host, Mikey Hu. Hey, what's up, Market Moose? Mike from the Moose on the Loose. How are you doing today? Um, today it's webinar day. So this afternoon I will host a webinar, free webinar, public webinar. You can ask me all kind of questions that you want, and I will discuss the most popular stocks held at DSR from position one to ten on the Canadian side and the U.S. side as well. So you can go at moosemarkets.com slash webinar. Uh, the uh, webinar is at 1 p.m. Eastern time and there will be a full replay sent to all registrant attendees. Uh, you don't have to worry about it. Um, and if you can make it to the live event, I usually stick around for a good hour and answer all your questions. Could be about stocks, about strategies, about the market, pretty much everything. It's just going to be a fun ride. So today we are looking at the last three of our top uh, 11 to 25, so position 13, 12, and 11. Those three companies are in my portfolio. Um, one of them is actually one of my largest position. I think it's like the fifth largest position in my portfolio. Um, but before we start, why is it so interesting to know what other investors have in their portfolio? I mean, we don't have the same investment strategy. We don't have the same goal. We don't even have the same financial situation or uh, volatility tolerance. So what is good for me might not be good for you. And, and this top 25 is actually a pretty good example where there are some quite popular stocks at DSR where definitely members didn't take those ideas from my portfolio or from stocks that I like. And that is perfectly fine. And that's what makes it amazing. And that's what we are. We have a stock market because when I'm thinking that a stock is good and I'm buying shares, that means that somebody else on the other side of the trade thinks that it's time to let it go. And there's probably not enough potential to, um, to this company. So, the idea of looking at the most popular stock is definitely not to build your portfolio, definitely not to start buying everything that you see, but more to have an idea of like what are like what investors are are looking at when they look, think about dividend stocks. Obviously, when we grow into those positions, especially in the top 10, we're going to find some heavy lifters, some generous yielders over there. So we can say that Canadians love their yield. Um, a word of caution about that. On my side, my favorite dividend stocks are usually low yield, high growth because high yield could lead to a lot of problems. So when I look at my top five strongest position, I have one high yielder and that's it. The other four are all low yield or mid yield and strong dividend growers. Why? Because my goal is not to get as maximum yield as possible, but rather the to maximize the total return. And when you have a company growing and showing a very strong dividend triangle, so the revenues are increasing every year, the profit is also increasing every year, and the dividend growth is growing five to like mid single to double digit year after year then you start to have something that is very interesting and not just for the growth, actually. I found it, it's a great defensive play. I mean, when you think about that, a company like Alimentation Costard is the perfect definition of a defensive stock where they, uh, they generate a lot of cash flow, they have a super strong balance sheet, they can grow to recession without any problems. So if the market goes sideways, it will defend your portfolio and still continue to do well. And when the market will explode and skyrocket, well, you can be sure that Alimentation Costal will continue to grow with acquisition and organic growth. So enough talking about, actually, Alimentation Costal is not even part of this uh, episode, but let's go with position number 13. It's a small position for the RESP for my children, and it's Emera, uh, a utility company um, based in Nova Scotia, but investing massively in Florida. So they made acquisition there uh, several years ago, and now most of their capital expenditure is going to the shining states. Um, I think it's a pretty good move. The regulators are 
nice over there. They are they welcome and uh, rates increase most of the time, so it's easy to negotiate with uh, regulators in Florida. And it is a flourishing state, a growing state, so Emra can find a lot of growth data over there. Uh, this year, utilities haven't doing. Uh, like this is not a sector that I've done very well. So they offer a 6% yield, but they offer also a dividend growth policy around 4 to 5% year after year. So at 4% dividend growth rate and a 6% yield, this is the type of business that is quite stable. And I kind of like to have it in ARESP since I want to pay for my kids' tuition with that. Number 12, uh, this is by far one of my favorite company, and you know that I keep talking about it. That's my favorite bank. Again, I'm a bit disappointed that it's not part of the top 10 and it not, it's not the most uh, popular bank at DSR since I'm such a, a, a cheerleader for them. And you guessed it, it is National Bank. So with a yield of 4.55, uh, National Bank, First, business model that is great because it's well diversified, about 50%, not even 50% anymore, like lower than 50% of their business are coming from classic savings and loans activities. The rest of the money is coming from capital markets, wealth management, and their US slash international expo uh, expansion with Credigy in the US and ABBA Bank in Cambodia. The thing that I love the most about National Bank is not even their narrative, but rather the number. So you know the proof is in the pudding. So best performing banks over the past five and 10 years, uh, one of the best dividend growers over the past five and 10 years. So strongest dividend growers over the past five years, second growers behind TD over the past 10 and lowest payout ratio at this time. So the bank that has the most means to increase its dividend next year, uh, they were the most generous in 23. So just as a comparison, the uh, least generous was Kosha Bank with not even 3%. I think it was like 2.91% dividend increase. And National Bank was above 9%. So they increased twice for a total of like slightly over 9% increase. And yet, they still show the lowest payout ratio. So it is a beast. It is a smaller bank, obviously, but it is also a faster one, more agile. And this is what I like about this one. Uh, I mean, full disclaimer, I've worked there for like 13 years. Um, I do like it's one of my largest position and I just I just love the bank. Let's be honest. And and I I mean, I, I, I totally assume it. Um, last but not the least for this podcast, number 11, uh, that is also a classic play. One of my first dividend grower that I bought uh, back in like 2012 or something like that. So just to give you a little story here, um, I started investing in 2003. I was fully invested, but trading all the time. I was young. I was passionate. So studying the market three, four hours a day, trading all the time, making a lot of money. But that was like a very time consuming hobby. Fast forward to 2010, I now I'm a financial planner, I'm doing my MBA full time, I have two children um, under five, I don't have that much time, right? So I and at the same time, I buy the dividend guy blog, realize that dividend growth investing is the way to be where I can generate solid returns. But at the same time, I do not have to spend three, four hours a, a day on the stock market. And then I start shifting my portfolio from an active one to a dividend growth one. So one of the first purchases I did throughout this period was National Railway. So Canadian National Railway, sorry, CNR.to or CNI on the U.S. stock market. Uh, this one has underperformed Canadian Pacific Railway over the past five years, but I do prefer this one because it's in line with my strategy, which is about dividend growth. So CNR is a dividend grower. Canadian Pacific is has grown by acquisition as of late with the acquisition of Kinzhal Southern. I don't expect a dividend increase. So from time to time, they increase the dividend, but most of the time they just take a break. So that's why I prefer CNR. Uh, 
I mean, railroads cannot really go wrong on one or the other. Their assets are unmatchable. They cover so much ground and we need that for transporting all our goods. Uh, so definitely a uh, one that also is interesting that you can grab a few shares at a good price whenever the market is down because it is a relatively cyclical. So when the economy slows down, their numbers are not great. And then vice versa, when the economy goes up, CNR will post high single digit to double digit growth. Um, all right, Moose. So I hope that I will see you um, in a few hours for the, the webinar at moosemarket.com slash webinar. If you cannot make it for the live event, no worries. Uh, you can register and see the replay or wait tomorrow and still go to moosemarket.com slash webinar and you'll get directly to the replay page. But that will just happen on Friday to the time that it's being um, uh, 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 programmed and, and posted on the website. All right, Moose, take good care. I hope that I see you uh, in a few hours. Let me know if you listen to the Moose and the Loose when you register. And we're going to talk again tomorrow. Until then, don't forget to stay invested. Hey, welcome to the Disclaimer. If you're listening to the Moose and the Loose, you cannot really expect me to give you buy or sell recommendation or financial advice, right? You're here for fun. You're here for information and some entertainment. But I am not your financial advisor. I am not your broker. So therefore, I'm not liable if you're losing money after listening to the podcast. If you're looking for some advice, go see a professional. If not, you can enjoy the show and do your due diligence after it.